Greetings, ladies and mendigants, and welcome to this latest episode of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Out space. Taken from the subreddit HFY. The links to all the stories will be down below, and as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do, please consider subscribing. Story number one Fear of Spiders. Written by You Sure I'm Not a Robot. The library ship co-sized to move carefully towards the human space station, suspended over a beautiful blue and white marble of their world. The curator was practically climbing the walls with excitement. What a glorious find! An unknown sentient space-faring race! That's next year's grant application approved already. His second scribe fluttered in agreement. We have so much to teach them. They must be trembling with anticipation. First, we must learn, then teach it, yes, but I doubt the marvellous moment for them. The space station's independent tracked the incoming ship, watching with apprehension as it approached. It continued to broadcast its good intentions in several languages. Captain Modest watched. Frick! They had to turn up now. We searched the stars for years, and we have two aliens turn up at once. At least they're not shooting this time. He turned to his second-in-command. Tell the engineers to stand down. The project is blown until we know what we're dealing with. Inform Earth and dig around my office for the first contact stuff. It's buried in there somewhere. Captain Modest waited outside the airlock for his new guests to arrive. He had brought his science officer and his engineering chief. He didn't have a Xeno officer yet. No one did. Now might be a good time to fix that. The second scribe entered the human vessel with a certain apprehension. They had traced the humans from a broadcast sphere surrounding the planet. They had a couple of centuries of low-quality audio and visual material to work from. Unfortunately, some of it was clearly fiction, while some of it was deeply hoped to be fiction, but suspected it wasn't. Her first priority was establishing communications to explain her mission. The human, identified as Captain, was tall. Very tall. They were tireless, bipedal, warm-blooded omnivores. Not unknown, but it was unusual for them to achieve spaceflight independently. Her species had developed of flightless avians, and she suspected that there weren't any similar creatures on the home planet of these people. At least, not for long. She bowed, her crest raised in respect. Captain, we have some knowledge of your language and from your broadcast sphere. I present to you the device that can translate the common language of the Great Galaxy. It will permit you to translate the information that we can provide. The captain returned the bow. If he had understood the strange, broken Mandarin, then this was one hell of a gift. The science officer went to take it, but the engineer grabbed it. I'll take that. I need to scan it before we attach it to anything important. A quick glance showed that it had been one switch, obviously on and off set up. They must have done this before. He turned it on and nodded to the captain. Thank you for your gift. I welcome you to Earth and hope our relationship to be prosperous and peaceful. The translator sent out a series of high-pitched squeaks. Apparently, it worked since the visitor bowed again and replied, This is our privilege to welcome you and your people to the Great Galaxy. Our mission is simply to spread knowledge. We seek to learn about humanity and help you rise to the stars. The box turned and wobbles into English. Granted, it was the sort of English you might expect a black and white newsreel from previous centuries. It was still better than her Mandarin. The second scribe had brought two other scholars with her. The first was the closest to a cos-sized head to a human body type, nearly as tall, with a similar facial features. Unfortunately, it was an engineer, not truly a scholar, but it was a standard practice to try and put the new species at ease. The second scholar was, uh, unhappily, a poor choice. The compound eyes and the eight limbs of the cultural analysis scholar seemed to be causing a great deal of discomfort amongst the humans. The second scribe tried to introduce it, but the humans were obviously uncomfortable. Apologies, scholar. I must ask you to return on board. Something about you is causing a fight-and-flight reaction from the humans. I will endeavor to resolve it, but this is not the time. 
Second scribe, this is very core of my profession. I must be present for the introduction of this new species. She bowed to her colleague. It is indeed a tragedy. I will record all of our interactions for you. Now please withdraw. She quickly sent her disgruntled scholar back to the ship before it can become an issue. When everything seemed to be going well, she would ask the captain about it privately. The captain heard a mixed warbles and squeaks before the guests, but the translator remained silent. Um, second scribe, does your gift not translate such language? My apologies, captain. You may set it as you wish, but we designate a spokesperson, in this case myself, as the user. It allows for a more orderly approach. It is quite capable of translating for a crowd, if you wish. Our own devices are internal. The alien engineer was staring around, obviously wanting to ask questions. The captain decided that this might be a learning moment for everyone. Perhaps your engineer scholar might enjoy a tour with our chief. We can continue our discussion in my office. The second scholar warbled in delight. This was the best kind of welcome. Some species held the technology to be a dark secret, never to be shared with strangers. It was a good sign that they were willing to be open about it. She turned to her engineer. You are permitted to tour with the human engineer. Adjust your translator and please behave appropriately. I will rejoin you on the ship. The captain and the second scribe walked away, leaving the two engineers to examine each other. The chief felt it needed to take the lead. This was his station. My name is Brenner, Chief Engineer Brenner, if we're being formal. May I ask your name? The alien touched his throat. I'm called Auric, and I'm also a Chief Engineer. Thank you for your welcome. Each translator had inflicted his English with a Scottish accent. Obviously, they all had watched a lot of human entertainment on the way here. Well, Eric, what would you like to see? Me, Alien, looked around. Everything? While the captain and the second talked earnestly about the endless possibilities of joining the greater galaxy, a more important alliance was forged. These are our engines. They provide a bit of thrust when we need them. Otherwise, they just provide power to the station and recharge our spacecraft as necessary. Occasionally, weapons if something heads our way. Rocks or debris, for example. Auric peered at the control console. All from here. We have separate systems for those functions. This is controlled by one person. Yes, of course. Power is power. Auric considered, deep in the heart, or a similar organ, of every engineer there was a desire to improve, to create something better, to save on the staff costs. He, like all engineers, dreamed of a bigger budget. For Auric, he saw some clever systems, underpowered and missing some vital parts, but integrated in a way that could transform his field. Possibly, but could I see some more? Your life's abroad, perhaps. The two engineers went section by section through the station. Finally, the impatient second scribe called the engineer. Are you lost? In some form of distress? I have been waiting for your return. As has the cultural analysis scholar, return immediately. Auric had lost track of time, forgotten that he was on a first contact mission. He and Chief Brenner had spent hours talking about systems, the improvements Galaxy Tech had available, and his delight in the human design. Chief Brenner, perhaps you would enjoy a tour of my ship tomorrow. I'm afraid I must report to the second scribe. The chief nodded. He too had nearly forgotten that this was an alien, newly discovered. I would be delighted, Auric. See you in the morning. I must report to the captain, but before you leave, may I ask you something? I am not sure if I should tell you this, but we have encountered another radiant species. It didn't end well. Perhaps you could identify them. He moved to the console and played a visuals. The craft arrived at a speed into range and immediately began firing on the station. Plasma smashed into the independent. We received no transmission, no warning. They just arrived and started shooting. Any idea who they were? Auric watched. The attackers were flying an old Intech cruiser, obsolete for many generations, still far beyond human tech. The ship is very old. Only pirates would use it. I assume they demanded a ransom. They are thieves, mostly, and they stay out here on the edge of civilization. 
No offense. How much did they steal? Chief Brenner shifted his head from the screen regarding the new friend. Nothing. Remember I mentioned our weapons and debris? We were worried that you were connected with them. Now that I know that you're not, well, I figured that you could help. Horik thought the translator had failed. They demanded nothing. They left. Perhaps I misunderstood. Chief Brenner just grinned. They weren't expecting us to shoot back. By the time it was over, they didn't want anything. Ever again. That's why your welcome wasn't as warm as, uh, perhaps it should have been. Forgive me. You destroyed them. How is that possible? Your generation's behind in technology compared to Intech. Have you ever heard of a nuclear-pumped extra laser? Because they hadn't. We were collecting up the wreckage as you've arrived. Ulrich understood the words, but even as an engineer, he couldn't figure out how they went together. Perhaps I should go see my second. I will meet you in the morning, Chief. Looking forward to it. The Chief went straight to the Captain's office. You were right, sir. They had nothing to do with the attack. I dropped a few hints about what had happened, and I left their engineer trying to figure it out. He's a good one. Told me I have a lot about their capabilities. Pure civilian. I get to see their ship in the morning. Well done, Chief. I practically bought Girl Scout cookies from this second scribe. I'm briefing Earth now. We will continue the welcome, allow them access to everything. It makes no odds until we figure out how this stuff works. The second scribe reported back to the curator. Captain, it was very helpful. He explained the current political structure, gave us access to the world database, with the apologies for some of its contents. Apparently, it is uncensored. We all have full access to the planet and has designated our shuttle as Xeno-1, should we wish to land anywhere. My records cannot find a more open and comprehensive welcome. The curator nodded. Yet, you don't sound convinced. What's in your mind, second? The second fluttered in frustration, her crest rising and falling. That's the problem. Who does that? Our own contact took nearly a generation before we opened up our world, and we were careless. Have these humans no fear? Oric had been listening, waiting to report. They have a reason. Before we arrived, they were attacked by an intact privateer. It must have followed our trail and jumped ahead. I didn't tell them the full story of what usually happens when a world falls to the intact. They destroyed it, and then we interrupted them recovering the debris. Such a ship could destroy us with ease. They have the finest engineering skills that I've ever seen. With the wreckage of that ship alone, they will be in the greater galaxy soon enough. They are not afraid, because they never expect to lose. From what I can see, they're right. The curator sank back in his bath. Well, best ensure that they join the community. We don't want them on the outside. You will prioritize engineering and design. Send them everything. Engineer Oric, you are now in charge of this contact. Send my regards to the cultural analysis scholar. Tell me, did you discover why he was a problem? The second nodded. Yes, curator. Apparently, they are afraid of spiders. End of story. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you did, please consider subscribing. If you wish to support the author, there is a link to the original story, so pop over there and give him your support. If you wish to support this channel, however, there are a few ways to do so. The best and easiest would be to share this video with other people, as well as liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. All of these things tell the algorithm that this channel is at least vaguely interesting, and that you may share it with other people. If you wish to support the channel in some other manner, watching my other videos would also help tremendously. Or, if you really, really, really like, there is a link down below to leave a tip or to join the Patreon. Any and all support is very much appreciated. And I hope that you all have a good one until the next time. And I'll see you then. Cheers.